If you use a shop vacuum indoors, whether it be in the workshop, the garage, or in any room of the house, you owe it to yourself and your family to use a HEPA filter. But these things can be expensive, so stick around and I'll show you how to make some shop vacuum improvements as well as save some money on these filters. I want to start off with a reminder or some new information for those of you who are new to shop vacuums. These paper filters, whether they be the HEPAs, the whites, or the blues, they're only to be used for dry pickup. So you may have purchased a wet dry vac. Yes, you can use it for liquid situations, but you should use the foam filter for that. So with that little disclaimer stated, let's get started. The biggest enemy against the lifespan of these filters are large particles. Sawdust is one of the worst. It gets trapped in the pleats and it reduces the amount of air that can flow through the filter. So then you have to replace the filter. Well, we can fix this problem by turning our one-stage filter into a two-stage filter. Out of the box, these typically come with a filter like this one or similar, definitely not a HEPA. We can also get filter bags. This can become our first stage filter. So we install this in the canister and all the large particles are trapped in the bag. Now I know what you're thinking. Chris, this sounds like a big pain in the ass. Well, actually it's not. I find emptying the canister to be much easier with the bags than it is without. But if you're really adverse to changing these bags, I have yet another solution for you. We can turn the two stage filter system into a three stage filter system. Now this isn't for everyone, but you can add a cyclone separator as a first stage filter. Now before you laugh, let me show you how well this works. I've had this set up for five years. I haven't opened this canister for two years. So let's pop it open, see what the filter bag and the filter look like after two years with the cyclone separator. All right. Well, the, the HEPA filter looks very, very clean. It's really, uh, there's a little bit of fine dust that comes off of the pleats, but uh, no big particles in there. Wow, the filter bag is mostly empty. There's a little bit at the bottom here. Um, I would show you, but I'm actually not going to take it out because it doesn't need to be changed. So over two years, I've spent no money on filter bags or filters. Now we'll say it's been two years and this thing's obviously doing its job of filtering the fine particles, so I'm gonna go ahead and replace that. I probably should start doing it more frequently. Two years is a pro probably a little too long. As you can see here, the cyclone separator bolts to the canister vac. Uh, it's quite easy to pop the top and empty the inside bucket. Now if you only have one vacuum and you take it from room to room, floor to floor, I wouldn't recommend this setup. But I would recommend it for a dedicated workshop or garage vac system. It'll cost you about 100 bucks, and if you're like me, you could probably make that back in anywhere from a year to two years. You'll notice that I was working with this vac at the beginning of the video, much different than the vac that had the cyclone separator on it. Well, this is my new vac. I needed more suction power, so I bought a more powerful vac, and now I'm gonna get it all outfitted with the filter bag, the HEPA filter, and I'm gonna take the cyclone separator off my old unit and attach it to this one. And I'd like you to show, to show you how it all turned out. I'd like to introduce you to my vacuum valet. Now I know what you're thinking, Chris, she's ugly. You'd be right, but she's a worker. This thing is awesome. I've got it outfitted with the highest CFM vac I could find. That's 203 cubic feet per minute. It's got the filter bag installed. It's got the HEPA filter installed. And sitting out front, I've got the De Dust Deputy Cyclone Separator. And that's fed by a 40-foot retractable hose reel. Sitting next to that is my attachment organizer, which I was in desperate need of. It's not really very mobile, but I did put it on casters in case I want to move it around the shop. Well, with this hose, I don't really need it to be too mobile. Some of you in the past have complained about my videos not showing you links to the materials I used. I have corrected that, so everything I've used here today will be linked to in the description down below. I'm Chris with Toolbox DIY. Thanks for watching.